Hey, you're listening to episode 19 of the TA Pedals podcast. I'm Tristan. And I'm Stefan. What's up, buddy? Nothing. Yeah. I'm, th- I'm tired. Yeah, I, I think uh, in different ways. We both had long weekends. Yeah. And you got a, you got a lot of stuff coming up this week, too, that you got to handle adult-wise. Yeah. I'm moving. Yeah, and I'm helping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a it's a mess. Hopefully we can get it all done in one day. That'd be nice. I believe in us with careful planning and uh some elbow grease. I, I think we'll be able to do it. It's not really I'm not really worried about getting it all done in one day. It's like we we got a couch and a chair and tables two desks and the beds and that's that's really all we have to move oh yeah we can get that done for sure then yeah well i'm exhausted for a completely different reason um but that's because you went somewhere this weekend i did go somewhere this weekend um where'd you go well saturday my vacation started which i am really happy about i need a break from uh from work and stuff really starting to get to me but um so saturday sydney and i uh spent the day like cleaning a little bit and like i think i mowed the yard or something did some yard work uh which you know in oklahoma doesn't amount to much because like it's like three days later and i already need to do it again (laughs) it sucks um but yeah so we did that and got some errands taken care of and like we went to Fort Smith to get some groceries, which uh, was like a half day ordeal, uh, running around trying to get out everything we needed. And um, then we just kind of like you know hung out uh, during the evening. And then Sunday, we got up at six thirty. But crack a dawn. Yep, exactly. <laughs> very very early, and. Um, I think, uh, yeah, it was 6.30, and we got around, packed lunches and stuff, and then headed off to Tulsa Zoo, and spent uh, probably from, I think it was like 9 or 9.30 to noon at the zoo. Uh, a lot of the animals were put away, unfortunately, especially a lot of the birds, because I guess they're like battling avian flu right now, which, you know... I, I would sucks. I would imagine that the heat didn't have any help in that. Oh yeah, no, no way. Um, we didn't even get to see like lions or anything. I don't know where they were. They're but, probably in their little caves. Yeah, cooling off. Um, we got to see some animals though, and you know, like since we have Benjamin now, it's it's mostly about him anyway, and he saw enough to be happy. He got to see like the meerkats and. Um, sea lions and penguins and, you know, some birds and monkeys and... Did you see the elephant? Um, he didn't see the elephant. Giraffe? Giraffe, yes. Oh, yeah. And then also, um, some chimps and, you know, chimps are a lot like people. It's it's really (laughs) weird, but, like, he was able to, like, understand, like, what they were doing and stuff. Like, they were eating oranges and he loves oranges and so I was like, look, buddy, like those, you know, those monkeys are, which I know they're not technically monkeys, but um, I was like, look, buddy, those monkeys are eating oranges. They like oranges just like you. And so like he, you know, was able to understand like what was going on a little bit more. We've taken him to the zoo before, but he was, he was just too young to like understand what was going yeah, on. So. Right, right now he's, he's in that stage of where everything he sees and everything he touches is a learning experience yeah exactly and then um after we after we left the zoo we took him to the aquarium in jinx and he one of his favorite movies that he watches all the time um and i mean all the time oh, I oh know. my gosh oh i know it's it's on almost every time I, I come over. <laughs> um he loves finding nemo 
And so we got to go to the aquarium and see some sharks and they had blue tangs. And so we were like, look, it's Dory. And then uh, we got to see some clownfish and told him it was Nemo and stuff. And he really liked it. He just wanted to watch Nemo all day. That was actually, I think, his favorite thing. He wanted, like, so the window to the clownfish, uh, like, exhibit was like kind of recessed a little bit so there was like a ledge Mm -hmm. right in front of the glass and he wanted to sit right there and so like we put him up there and uh he just wanted he just wanted to stay (laughs) and uh yeah he sat up there for quite a while watching all the nemos take pictures Mm -hmm. yeah i'll have to show you uh it's it was really cool and he had a good time and honestly like so have you ever been to the jinx aquarium um if if it's the one that's like under the umbrella of Tulsa, then yeah. Yeah, it's it, then yeah. There's yeah. like no clear line between the town of Jinx and Tulsa. It's, yeah. Um yeah, I've definitely been there then. So you know the the shark tunnel thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh I was I'm serious. Like I at one point, like I was like looking around and they were so close <laughs> and I was like, I I seriously have to get out of here. And I was like, I know nothing's going to happen, but like, I have to get out of here. It's <laughs> freaking me out. And, uh, yeah, like, I mean, they were, they were swimming like right overhead. Um, if it weren't for the glass, I would say they were probably four feet away. Yeah. It's, uh, the, you get, they get close. Yeah. I did not like it. I mean, I did because it's interesting and really cool, but, uh, I, it made me feel a certain way that I was very uncomfortable with. I didn't like it. And so anyway, yeah, we, we got to see a bunch of stuff at the aquarium and it was, it was fun. And yeah, then we got home around five, everyone took a nap and woke up around nine, got up, had like a snack or whatever, watched some TV and crashed again. It was a long day, long weekend. Sounds like it. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice to get away, but you know that doesn't mean it's, it's also uh, nice not to exhausting. Come home. Yeah, exactly. Very nice to be home, and uh, yeah, thankful we got to do it. But I'm glad it's that's, over. <laughs> that's very, that's very good. Yeah, good stuff. So um, we talked about what we were going to talk about today, right before we jumped on, and um, I have something to show you real quick. Oh, you do? Okay. So when my daughters were younger. I took him to that aquarium, right? Okay. And about, I would say like five years later, I took him again. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. It's, I got the like same. This. I got the same exact picture of them when they were like one and two years old, and then another when they were like six and seven. I think. It's crazy. Yeah, that's really cool. I like pictures like that where like you recreate old yeah. uh, scenes and stuff. Yeah. It's nostalgia. That, I do like that aquarium a lot. It's really fun. It's fascinating. Yeah, I uh, I touched the stingrays. Oh. And I was like, I'll, and I whispered to him, I said, I'll never forgive you for what you did to Steve Irwin. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I think of, every time Stingrays gets brought up, that's like the only thought that pops in my head. It's really sad. I mean, he was a national treasure. Yeah. He, he was genuinely enthusiastic about, you know, animal preservation and um, education. And yeah, what a wild guy. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy that he wrestled crocodiles and stuff and then he got killed by a stingray. <laughs> yeah. That, I mean, 100%. Like, it's like the most unlikely thing to have killed someone like that. And that's what happened. Yeah. But I guess, um, I digress. So, uh, we put out a new pedal this last week and we ain't talking about the shark. Uh, we did put out the shark and that's cool. And if you haven't, checked it out uh you definitely should yeah for but, sure but then we put out something else and uh it's pretty cool it's the ta pedals buffer solution 
and it's a it's a buffer. It's a, <laughs> it's exactly what it sounds like, and we wanted to make uh, something that was uh, what I called in the copy for the, for the website no nonsense, and that's exactly what it is. It's um got two you know mono jacks for your input and output. It's got a DC jack and no controls. You just plug it in, it does what it's supposed to do, and you're good to go. You don't have to mess with any knobs. You don't have to, uh, you know, like worry about if it's set up right or anything like that. It's uh, If you are needing a buffer due to impedance issues, um, or if you're trying to drive your guitar signal through a, a long cable or a bunch of pedals on your pedal board that are true bypass, um, you probably need a buffer. And uh, we wanted to make one that was affordable and uh, easy to use, kind of self-explanatory. Even you literally just plug it in and it works. And we have we have a, a LED indicator that you know tells you that the pedal is on, and that's pretty much all you need. And uh, yeah. And we've decided that um, we're going to have two different options available and. So you can have your LED be blue or you can have it be green, depending on whatever preference you want. Yep. We think that both options look really good. And um, we were kind of discussing which color we wanted to go with. And uh, originally we decided on blue because blue is cool. I think blue is my favorite color. And um, I got to, you know, thinking about it and I was like, well, just based on like the color of the silver and the artwork and, you know, just stuff like that. I was like, I think green would probably fit better. So I brought it up to Stefan. I was like, Hey, like, what do you think about switching to green? And he was like, why not both? (laughs) (laughs) I was like, yeah, I guess you're right. Why not both? We can add the option on the website and people can just choose. And there you go. And we don't have to put the led in until the order comes in. Yep. That's true. As soon as it comes in, then we're like, they want the blue one. <laughs> they can have that blue one. Yeah. So, uh, a buffer. Why would you need a buffer? Well, I already told you, so I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm not gonna go into excruciating detail, but um, just there's lots of uses for a buffer. Yeah, like if you haven't if you haven't considered whether you need a buffer or not, um take a minute and just think about your guitar chain and how, how much uh, like wire and cable it's running through. And also something you can do to kind of test whether you would benefit from a buffer um, is take your guitar and plug it directly into your uh, amp and listen to like the high end and um, then take that, guitar and plug it into your pedal board and um kind of pay attention to the the high end as it comes through like or goes through your entire pedal board chain and see if there's a noticeable difference in the high end um because essentially what happens is like once you've run your guitar signal through um a long length of cable or wire it introduces capacitance it's uh, like 30 picofarads per foot of cable or wire. And um, essentially like what happens is it weakens your guitar signal and um, it actually kind of filters off the high end. And so you lose the brightness of your guitar signal. And so if you do that test and you find that you are losing that high end and you believe it's because of how many true bypass pedals or cable you're running through um then you probably need a buffer and so we made this uh our buffer solution pedal affordable and accessible because we know that buffers aren't like the most expensive expensive well this one's not expensive so i'm not wrong but they're not the most exciting they're not the most appealing yeah like if you need a buffer it's more of a practical solution not like a creative tool it's a buffer solution yeah it's a buffer solution (laughs) and so definitely if you think you could benefit from a buffer go check ours out it's uh made with you know like the highest quality components you can get which you know we pride ourselves on we do that with every pedal 
and even though this one is uh, very affordable, uh, we're selling it for thirty nine ninety nine. Um, it still uses the best components you can get: um, Wema caps, you know, Nichicon uh, electrolytic caps, Lumberg uh, DC jacks, and input and output jacks. So, I mean, you really can't get you know any better than that. And um, yeah, so go check it out. And if you think you need a buffer, uh, pick one up. And uh, pick you one can, up for half the price that you're going to find it somewhere else. Yeah, seriously. Uh, a lot of our competitors, there's, I think there's only one brand that's even close to our price range on a buffer like this, and we're not sure of the quality of it. Um, most other buffers are two to three times the price. And, um, you know, like I said, it's not the most exciting thing in the world. And if I needed a buffer, like if I knew I needed one, I wouldn't want to spend an arm and a leg on it. So um, that's kind of the goal we had with the buffer solution was to keep it affordable and accessible. So yeah, you can find that on our website, tapedals.com and uh, yeah, give it a shot. So that's, that's the buffer. What's, what's the other thing we got? Other thing, Stefan, I don't know what you're talking about. (laughs) You have some secret pedal. Oh yeah. You mean the secret pedal we've been hiding for, months the one that's literally done oh it's done i'm looking at it right now oh my gosh what does it look like a pedal whoa Uh. (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah um so we want to announce our secret pedal to the listeners of the podcast first uh we don't plan on revealing it until no pictures yeah no no please no pictures (laughs) um (laughs) I feel like I'm, it's on Holly, the Hollywood red carpet. We'll do our best to describe it, though. Yeah. So, um, look-wise, it looks a little different right now than what it's going to look like in its final version. But the circuit itself is done. So, um, I guess I'll just describe the graphics and stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, you, we can describe the graphics, and we can describe um, what color the pedal is going to be, um, and we can describe the cool features on it, and yeah, let's what do it does, and vice versa, how much it's going to cost. Oh, yeah, okay. You know, there's lots of things we can talk about. Then let's get after it. Where do we start? First off, this pedal... <laughs> is gonna come to you for the low price of eighty nine ninety nine. Whoa, that's so affordable. It is for a for a fuzz sustain pedal. It's pretty cheap. I yeah, think, for a brand new one anyway. Yeah, for sure. And um, what quality po- components does it have? All of them. It has all of the quality components. It has a relay bypass. Uh, non-analog a a digital relay bypass it has the led riser halo (laughs) however it's called yeah doesn't matter bottom line is is you don't have an led light blinding you in the face it is now coming out the bottom of the pedal whoa that's That's pretty sick i think (laughs) that color is going to be white right um, I don't know. I don't think we've quite decided on that. I'm not positive, but yeah, either white think, or maybe yellow. I don't know. It I, just depends. I mean, regardless of whether or not we've decided, I'm pretty sure it's going to be white. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. All right. It also has, you know, the other high quality components that we've previously talked about, with the Wema caps and the... There's no, there. I don't think there's there is any electrolytic capacitors. There's one. Okay, yeah. so there will be one Nietzsche Condo <laughs> electrolytic capacitor on it. There will be beautiful, very useful alpha pots that we love to use so much. Oh yes, uh, smooth turning. <laughs> yeah, just smooth gliding, moderate resistance. You're not trying to turn something and it just flips all the way to the end all of a sudden. That's crazy. (laughs) 
Yeah, it's um, so the petal itself is uh, going to be yellow. Uh, it's called we're calling it the Buzzkill. Uh, and why is that? Well, because your genius wife came up with the the <laughs> name. We, you know, we're thinking about the the concept of the pedal actually all the way back when we did the Christmas market in December of 2021. And I was like, I want to do a pedal that has like a wasp on it. And like we started talking about that concept. And I remember this, this video that I saw on, I think it was YouTube and it was like a fake ad essentially um, and honestly, it's like one of the craziest ads I've ever seen on YouTube, um, because it was actually like a warning from the future. <laughs> and what I mean by that is it was talking about how we need to be careful of how we implement drone technology. And essentially what it was portraying was the idea that you could, um, have small drones um, that were disposable and had like a like one shot explosive in them, and what would happen was you could be targeted by satellite using you know like your phone's location or you know some other means like ca- uh, facial recognition from cameras, uh, and what would happen is if you were suspected of a crime or even maybe they some sort of um, what's the word I'm looking for preventative, you know, measures were implemented for people who were, um, statistically likely to become criminals. They could be targeted. And what would happen was the government could send out these tiny drones that looked like, you know, just like regular drones. And that what they would do is find people who were of interest in those categories, potential criminals or known criminals, and the drone would fly into the forehead or wherever uh, of that person. Wherever, wherever it needs to go to a kill lethal, that person. Yeah, a yeah. lethal um, explosive. And it would explode on their, their head or whatever and kill them instantly. And they could unleash um, like swarms of these drones. And they would be pretty inexpensive. Um, and so it was like a warning from the future. Like, hey, like if we hand over... Um, the operation of technology like this to artificial intelligence or, or, you know, or a corrupt uh, agency, then this is a likely scenario for the future. And so that really like kind of terrified me. And so I was like, well, that's like a really cool concept. It sounds like something that would happen in an episode of black mirror or whatever. And I was like, but, let's like take it a step further. And like, what if those drones looked like bees or wasps more specifically? And so like at the Christmas, Christmas market, Stefan and I started talking about that concept about how, like if there was a wasp drone that you could send swarms of to handle, um, you know, like a, uh, like an assassination, mission or something just really anything anything where you need to kill someone <laughs> like automatic like or um so yeah i can't think of the word so e- like regardless um we basically did a mock-up drawing of what this drone would look like and so it has little like it has it looks like a wasp it has the legs the you know the body and the head and the and the wings and it has on its four front legs i guess hands it has little pointers that would attach to your body whenever it hits you and then the abdomen would be filled with this with its explosive and then you know it has targeting uh instruments in it and it has the wings to make it fly and and we came up with a basic design that would showcase that and i think it turned out pretty cool 
It definitely did. And it was a lot of refinement and, um, you know, because like there was this particular image that I had in my head for sure. And I was like, like, it's gotta be that, like, if it's not that, then I don't know what to do. And like, it kind of, I don't know if, you know, if you, if you're a Pokemon fan and you know what <laughs> mega B drill looks like, it almost looks like that unintentionally. Um, it, it's got like the like drill type hands and whatever, but it's definitely different than that. But like, if I had to compare it to anything, it would probably be that. And I think that's super cool because yeah. I'm a huge fan. But um, yeah, so it's got it's got the wasp on the front of it, and then it's got just simple letter uh, labels V T S uh, for volume, tone, and sustain. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. How that story relates to the name, uh, uh, it's pretty obvious. But that's why we're calling it the Buzz Kill, because it's a it's because a wasp drone that assassinates people. Because you hear the sound of a buzz right before you're killed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, it's a it's it's a three knob fuzz, uh, and it's based on the uh, Russian version of the uh, Big Muff. So it's a discreet. Um, Fuzz pedal, discrete, meaning it doesn't have any um, integrated circuit chips or anything. It's just transistors. And, uh, yeah, so it has that. And then it has our, you know, normal uh, relay system in it. So it's going to be really cool. And we have this prototype here that it's the one we're talking about. We made a prototype, and it's orange. We were testing colors, and um, I think yellow is going to be a more appropriate color. But we have this orange one here. And uh, I've been playing around on it a little bit, and it's really sweet. So uh, if you like Big Muff's style pedals, uh, you'll definitely like this one. It's a, it's a really great fuzz pedal, and like Stefan said, we're bringing it to you again at an affordable price. We wanted to do a couple pedals that were like more budget-friendly, but still really cool and still include all of the... Uh, high quality components that we would normally use in our higher end builds. Uh, we were able to, you know, like source our components and everything, like all the logistical factors that go into it to make it more affordable than some of our other pedals. And, uh, yeah, we were able to do it. We've been working on it for a long time and, uh, it's done aside from ordering the correct enclosure and, uh adjusting the layout slightly so yeah it's done and we'll be bringing that to you probably what within the next month or two i would say so yeah i think that's probably just, good spacing just the fact that you can get a big muff style fuzz that doesn't blind you with leds <laughs> and it's it's very simple um to use and it looks it's gonna look so cool on your pedal board and it's less than a hundred dollars. I think that's a win. Uh, if anyone was looking for that kind of style um, uh, sound, I guess uh, on their pedal, and they didn't want to spend a bunch of money on it, like we've we've solved that issue, and it's gonna look sick. Yeah the um, the Big Muff is like a classic pedal. Like if you like fuzz and you don't like the Big Muff. Um, that's fine, but like most people do, and I love it. And so it's, it's just a classic, you know, sound like uh, the original, the like original fuzz pedals were transistor fuzzes, and this is a four transistor fuzz. Exactly, and, and it's got an iconic sound, and a lot of people love that sound. And so we took that sound and. And we turned it into something that's more lethal, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good way to put that, actually. Really good. Yeah. And um, I made a um, Big Muff clone of my own um, several months ago. And I pretty much recreated like the electro harmonics, uh, like graphics and stuff, but more so in like the way that I would do it. Um, and I chose to so it's a pedal pcb um circuit board that's inside of it and i guess i just decided to make the green russian version on a whim 
and you know each version is slightly different i think there's like seven or eight different versions something like that there's a lot of different versions and i really liked the um the look of the green russian um especially like the original one with like the weird knobs like i have on mine and i was able to get some of those cool knobs and so yeah i made myself a green russian uh big muff just to kind of see how i liked it and i i instantly fell in love with it and now, so oh go ahead uh, how much more do you have to say <laughs> not much okay go ahead i was just gonna say so like when we were you know like doing our research and development for our buzz kill uh, like when I built that for myself, I was like, okay, like it should definitely be based, be based on that. Like yeah. this, you know, we decided we were going to make uh, pedals that we, you know, I make one that I have like full control over. You make one that you have full control over and then we'll, we'll make those and put it out. And like, I feel like this pedal is like really representative of me and what I like. And yeah, that's all I have to say about that. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to point out that while it is um, essentially a green Russian, um, we did do some slight modifications to it. We did um, add a little bit of a boost in volume, and we did, uh, I would I would say, it probably lets a little bit more high end into it. Yeah, there's definitely a difference in the, in the tone controls. Yeah. Um, I was actually doing like a side by side comparison of my green Russian clone and the buzz kill. And, um, I've noticed a difference in every parameter. Yeah. Um, which is really cool. And I think part of it has to do with, you know, changes in components that we made, but also some of it, I think even just has to do with layout, which yeah. is interesting because, you know, it's not like we just got the, you know, the circuit board for a green Russian from another company and stuck it in our pedal and said it was our own product. Like we actually went and, you know, Stefan created our own custom circuit board. And, um, so in, you know, inherently it's going to sound different because it is different. It's a different thing. Plus the component changes and, you know, the boost in volume and things like that. So, um, yeah yeah we like loud pedals uh, in case y'all haven't noticed <laughs> the the squid's super loud the shark is super loud and now this one is on par with the others so it fits it fits us yeah i would i mean i would rather have too much uh available volume yeah on tap than not enough for sure so you can always dial it back but you know when a pot's maxed out that's it so yeah, we that's one of the actually last changes we made is like once we had like the working circuit and everything, I was like, it sounds really good and it sounds like it's supposed to, but like it's a little quiet. Mm -hmm. And so we went back through the schematic and we were like, okay, well, like what's, you know, going to change that output volume, found the output resistor, changed that to, I think, what was it before? I think we, um, it, I, I don't, was I it think, a 10K? I think. I want to say it was a 2.2K. Oh, yeah, I think you're right, actually. And we changed it at least in half. Yeah, it's a 1K now. Yeah, and so that boosts the volume enough to... It boosts it enough to notice that there's a boost to it. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, and, and, that, and by changing that, it also changes, you know, a lot, uh, like some of the, the tonality to it as well, and it... And I think it does let a little bit more high end in, in with that change as well. So I think we did something cool and different um, with a classic circuit. Yeah, for sure. It's uh, it's really cool. I don't think that I don't think that uh, a big muff there that they have a big muff that rep, that is similar to what we have uh, there. So I mean, like they have the green Russian. But do they have a green Russian that has, you know, that change to it? You know what I mean? Yeah, true. Um, I'm just glad that you're you're gonna take it home and you know mess around with it some more, because when I, like I said, whenever I made my green Russian clone, um, I fell in love with it. Like I, you know, uh, you have a squid at home, and I feel like 
you know, since the squid is kind of kind of like based around a rat in a, in a certain way, a very roundabout way. It's like a rat's third cousin. It's different enough from a big muff style um, that you're going to be able to get different tones out of this and explore a kind of a different side of distortion and fuzz than you're getting with your squid. And um, yeah, I'm just excited. Yeah. It'll be cool. I can't wait um, to get it home, plug it up and check it out. I mean, I know what it sounds like, but I don't know what it sounds like, you know, in line with the squid. Yeah, true. And um, through that amp. Yeah. It's going to sound very different. And that's something that I've noticed, too, is like, uh, you know, on my Axe effects, there are hundreds of amps. And it sounds very different through each one of them. And, you know, I was playing through like a Fender Vibrolux, which is like one of my favorite clean amps ever in the Axe effects. It's, it's really nice. And I tried our buzzkill through it, and it sounded completely different than the normal patch that I use, which is like a Badger, like a Sir Badger uh, 30 amp. And so it definitely um, depends on what other gear you're using, what kind of tones you can get out of it. And I think that's really interesting, because you can have so many unique combinations. I'm really... I'm really interested in in working on a a a tube solid state combo amp. I think that would be cool. Like a TA pedals amp. Yeah, like a like Ooh. a TA pedals amp, but there's there's solid state and there's tube, and you can switch between the two, and Ooh. then and then it also has its own distortion on it as well that would be interesting i th- i think if we were gonna make an amp i think that's the way to go nice because that covers all the bases yeah true i wonder what kind of engineering uh hurdles we would have to jump through because they work so differently but on- they do have similar parts on- honestly like honestly like i feel like the the knowledge that we've acquired so thus far uh i think that we could pull something like that off yeah i mean like the the pcb is going to be significantly more complicated (laughs) than what we're used to working on but but then again like what we end up with is going to be it's pretty cool i think yeah it definitely would be cool um we would just have to figure out how to switch between tube and solid state and all that. Um, I think that's the easy part. (laughs) I don't know if it is or not because you have to worry about power rectification and like the biasing of transistors and tubes. If we create, if we create two separate circuits Mm -hmm. and we switch between the two circuits, that, that would be easy. Exactly. But if we, if we were trying to integrate, some parts to work with either side that would get difficult you know what i mean like if it was i don't know how to explain it's too complicated of an idea to to explain on air live but i don't know i i i feel like it's i feel like it's not as complicated as as we're thinking it's going to be yeah or like so i'd like to do i you know what i'd like to do what is i'd have is we can have um have the like the controls and we can split them to go you know to each pcb and then the toggle will be a three-way toggle and then you can have solid state or you can have tubes or you can have both and then the blend knob will blend in the two like you can have this way or that way or put it in the middle and it blends in both of them interesting i think that's i think that's unique enough for us (laughs) (laughs) it would be weird um i mean it would be weird but like would, What's more interesting than something weird? Yeah, you know? true. 
<clears throat> we would just have to figure out how to. So, like in a situation like that, you'd have to worry about the output impedance of the, um, the tube section, and then the output impedance of the solid state section, because when you're talking about speaker load, you, if you had to, it, it would essentially be like like if the amps were blended 50 50, it would almost be like having two amps running simultaneously into a speaker cabinet, which would overload it. Like if they were both running at 16 ohms and then you engaged both of them, you would blow your speakers easy. So we would have to have a way with that toggle switch to drop each down to like eight ohms or something. And then like figure out a way to blend in. Like, I don't, it, it it's not undoable, but it would be complicated, but it would be it's, interesting. It, without that, it's going to be complicated. Yeah. And no matter what, true. if we're going to, if we're going to make, if it's going to be a complicated thing, then let's make it complicated. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Let's do, let's do everything that we can to bring it to life. Cause I don't, I don't know how, uh, you know, like this is the first time we spoke about it. Um, so I don't know what your uh, opinion is exactly on, on those ideas. Um, but that's something I'm really excited about. Um, My opinion is I'm down for whatever, but that is going to have to be a long term project and that's fine for sure. Like we got time. That's a background project for sure. Yeah. But, I, but I've always, since we started talking to Homer about his amp, uh, El hombre, <laughs> <laughs> I've wanted to build an amp. And, um, so yeah, I'm down to I mean, try we, whatever. We've talked about building amps, you know, before that. That's true. And Even refurbishing them. And it's like, we've, you know, we've thrown out some ideas, but we never had like a solid plan on what it's going to be. And I, and, and now that I think about it like that, this, this idea for this amp sounds right. Um, <laughs> it sounds right. You're feeling it. it. It sounds, it sounds like that's, if we're like, if, if we're going to put out an amp that says, this is us like that's i i feel like that says it yeah i think so too i i, I want to do weird things yeah so i'm I'm okay with that and i want it to be white <laughs> i want it to be just like pearl glossy white with like a like a black and gray grill on the front mesh whatever it's called that would be really cool and then like black letters everywhere and then like a big old fat ta logo right on the top of it <laughs> <laughs> or if we could f uh find a way to put the logo on the mesh that would be cool yeah like um like some amps do this and i really like it um like fender like the the amp that you have at your house um it has like a plastic logo yeah um that's like it almost i don't know how to explain it but it's not like flat it's um yeah. It's like a, a, an embossed kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, and it has screws. I think that could be really cool. I really like that idea. But but I want to see if we can find a way to get the logo printed on the mesh. Oh, there's definitely a way to do that. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know how, but you well, can I mean, do that. if anything, we could, you know, take, take it down and have it screen printed. Like, yeah. Uh, I don't know how long it'll last. It, <laughs> it, I mean, it definitely probably would fade over time. But at the same time, I think it'll look co really cool. Yeah, and well, I mean, honestly, like what amp stuff? Like, I don't, can't think of any amps that don't fade over time. Like, that's yeah. just normal wear and tear yeah. on stuff like that. So, hello, <laughs> hello. What are you doing, guys? <laughs> We're talking. It's joke time. It's joke time. Two blondes met for dinner after work and were watching the 6 o'clock news. A man was shown threatening to jump from the Brooklyn Bridge. The first blonde bet the second blonde $50 that he wouldn't jump, and the second blonde replied, I'll take that bet. Anyway, sure enough, he jumped. So the first blonde gave the second blonde $50 that she owed her. The second blonde said, 
I can't take this. You're my best friend. The blonde said no. A bet's a bet. So the other blonde said, listen, I have to admit, I saw this one on the 5 o'clock news, so I knew that he was going to jump, so I can't take your money. And the other blonde said, well, I saw it earlier too, but I never thought he'd jump a second time. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. I I didn't expect it to go that way. But at the same time, yeah. (laughs) I have a second joke. All right, let's do it. It's joke time. It's joke time. A blonde walks into an electronics store and goes up to the counter and tells the man, I'd like to buy this TV. And he says, we don't sell to blondes. So she leaves and she dyes her hair brunette. She comes back and she says, sir, I'd like to buy this TV. And he says, sorry, we don't sell to blondes. So she leaves and she dyes her hair red. She comes back and she says, sir, I'd like to buy this TV. And he says, sorry, we don't sell to blondes. She says, I've dyed my hair several times. How did you know I was a blonde? And he said, because that's not a TV. It's a microwave. (laughs) (laughs) That's a good one. I like that. Oh, man. Yeah. So anyway, um, we got uh, all the pedals talked about, and um, there are still pedals that we have in secret. Just so you guys know, we're still hoarding our secret plans, um, but maybe we'll reveal those at a later date. And um, I guess be on the lookout for more uh, buzzkill news. Uh, it's coming pretty soon. We're just cranking these pedals out, you know, left and right. And, uh, you know why? Because we want to make cool stuff to help you make cool stuff. That's right. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Is that it? We got anything else? I think that's it. All right. Bye. Bye.